the Colts had to sneak out of town at night. It degrades a great tradition of the city in football. We are coming up on the 36th anniversary of the Baltimore Colts leaving us. And people to this day say, get over it. I can't, I can't. Here's why. When the Colts left, they took 12 years of my prime time cheering life away. My first autograph was with Johnny Yu and Don Shinnick at the Heck Company. And I still have that little piece of paper, Johnny Yu. He used to come in here on Christmas Eve and he used to walk into the desk here at Channel 2 and say, all right, what do you guys need? And he used to take his left hand and he could barely move and he was signing all our football sports. And then we'd go out to training camp and we'd watch them. And then Burt Jones came to town and Burt was like, the, he was it. And Lydell Mitchell and I used to have a Don McCauley jersey and until I wore it out last week. They were entrenched in our lives. And when we used to cross the street, we used to go, and the rest of the Baltimore Colts, we would imitate the PA announcer, Harry Shriver, at Memorial Stadium. I'll never get over the Baltimore Colts leaving us. I can remember every vivid thing, even the disaster, when the Colts left. By 10 o'clock this morning, most of the equipment and Colt memorabilia had been moved out of the Colt complex in Owens Mills, and the Colt employees had been told that the team was going to Indianapolis. Reactions from now former Colt employees and fans came fast and from the heart. What are your thoughts right now? It's sad. I'm glad it's over. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just very sad right now. Were you a fan as well as an employee? I think I missed one game in four years. When you have to sneak out in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night, don't inform your vested employees of your intentions. I don't want to work for people like that. You say you wouldn't go? I wouldn't go if I were, unless I were paid a million dollars, and then, then I would have to think about it. Really, because uh, I think these were very poor tactics with employees. That have, like I am entering my 11th year with the Baltimore Colts. And to not inform people of what's going to happen, I think is totally despicable. You so say you would no longer want to work for this organization? Absolutely not. Wherever they go. Well, I figured I'd take a look at the complex one last time. It's uh, the sneakiest thing I've ever seen done in my life. I can't believe it. In uh, 14 years, I missed one football game, and uh, I just don't know what I'm going to do this fall, to tell you the truth. Are you more angry or saddened? I think both, a combination of both. Uh, I just can't believe this is happening. You never forget the Colts. Are you going to go on wearing that hat? Absolutely. We're still going down our convention June in Ocean City to corrals. We're not going to stop just because the team's gone. The band didn't stop in 50 and 51, so why should we stop? We've got 27 years involved the corrals with this ball club, so why should we stop? We'll be here when the new Colts come in. We talk to you. We talk to you, please. One of the few people who didn't have anything to say to reporters out at the Colt Complex today was Colt lawyer Michael Chernoff. By midday, everyone had left the Colt Complex. All that remained was one pickup truck owned by the team. The front gate has been locked to keep anyone from going in. And now Bob Ursay has an abandoned training center in one city, an equipment and a team in another. I'm Susan Whitebowd, New Scene 2, Owens Mills. Susan White Bowden saying the Colts are leaving. This can't be happening. I was working in radio out in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and I got on my, I got in my car and I drove out 70 to try to stop the, the, the vans, the Mayflower vans. And I'm right up against, and I remember I was right up against them. And I'm looking, I'm, I have to do my civic duty to stop this van. And all of a sudden, the, State police pull me over and they say, you got to stop this. I said, no, yeah, yeah. I understand, but you got to stop it. And so I lost them. I, I, I followed them all the way up to Cumberland and up to Frostburg and doggone it. Bob Reed was there that night. He went out to the complex. Here's his story, Mr. Reed. It was a cold, hideous March night, a night when football died. And Robert Reed was there. 
As a kid, he didn't do anything wrong, not even steal a candy bar. As a kid, he dare not climb a tree, but in his 20s, he hurdled an eight-foot-high fence all for the love of the Colts. Now in his 30s, Robert Reed, wearing the same shirt, jacket, and pants, returns to the very scene which changed his life forever. I spotted Cush and Chernoff, general counsel for the Colts, up in the window over here to the right. Saw them standing in there choreographing the move, pointing, you know, pointing out to the Mayflower moving uh, van people what to do. We could, he we could hear the, uh, the movers talking as they were walking out, and I was tempted to, to try to jump in and act like I was moving, but I had this blue jacket on, so I thought, well, I'm not going to blend in because the Mayflower guys had green. So Robert Reed followed the Mayflower vans past Westminster, past Olney, beyond Sykesville, Frederick, Hagerstown, Oakland. Go west, young Colts, while Robert Reed stays east, bitter and confused. We filed a van out about 4 a.m. They were heading out towards Frederick. We were hoping they'd have a change of heart and turn around and come back. They didn't do it. But no such luck. To this day, in his wallet, he carries a wrinkled 1983 Colt schedule oh, wow. and a black and white picture of Bob Ursay next to his niece, Katie. And every year, he attends one Colt game. When they're on the road, I still consider them the Baltimore Colts. And I still root for them. Now, when they're at home in, in that other city, I consider them an opponent. It's been quite a ride, but I'll never forget that March night when the Baltimore Colts left. And then I got here to work at Channel 2, and I remember John Zeman, who was the head of the Colts band, still is, saying we'll never get a football team. We'll never get a football team. And then I remember the packet of information that Herb Belgrad put together, Matt DeVito put together, Kurt Schmoke, our mayor, and, and then Governor Schaefer and they put the, together this packet of information to present to, as, to the expansion committee. We went out to Chicago and I remember standing by the elevator and I was waiting for Jimmy Ursay to come off of that elevator and I'm, I'm standing there and everybody from all the other medias are coming up, but what are you doing? I'm waiting for Jimmy Ursay to come off the elevator. The elevator door is coming. Jimmy, are you voting for us? Well, I, I think everyone would like to see football in, in all these cities. I'm sure all the presentations are great and, and um, it, we're definitely not going to stand the, in the way of voting for Baltimore if their uh, package and what they have to offer is the best. He said, yes, okay, all right. And then I remember being upstairs in the, uh, in the hotel at Chicago, at O'Hare. This is a, a, an airport hotel. And I remember we were sitting there with my photographer, Ted Holtzclaw, and the elevator doors open and security said, Baltimore contingent, we're ready for you. We get on the elevator and I'm, I'm in the elevator with Ernie Accorsi, Mayor Schmoke, the governor, Herb, and Matt. And we go all the way down and nobody said a word. Nobody said a word. And we're all thinking, we're gonna get this team. And the elevator doors open, we're in the kitchen at this hotel, we're walking through and all of a sudden security blocks us and they lead the rest of the, the guys through. And about two minutes later, we come into the to the, like the, the area where all the media was assembled. And I look over and I see Schaefer up against the, I can still remember, I see Schaefer up against the wall, just arms crossed and, and it went to Jacksonville and it went to Charlotte. I know what the deal was, but we didn't know what the deal was. The deal was plain and simple. Baltimore deserved that expansion team. They deserved it and they didn't get it. And it was like, what in the world is going on? And here we come out of it. Here we are. We have the worst owner in professional sports, and now we have the best owner in professional sports. We had the worst run franchise, and now we have the best run franchise. We had Super Bowls with the Baltimore Colts. We've had two with the Baltimore Ravens. And now the Ravens are entrenched in your life in your heart. And when you cross that street, you'll say, and the rest of the Baltimore Ravens. Hey man, don't get no better than this, man. If this is, if this is it. It's not it. It's not it. Don't you ask me that right now. It's not about that. It's about two tickets to paradise. We want it tonight. <laughs> yeah, we get to this training room. 
All right, I want you to share your memories, what you remember when the Baltimore Colts left, how you felt, all that stuff. But I also want you to tell us what it's like to have a professional football team like the Baltimore Ravens in our town. Go on and tell me how they're in their blood, how they're in your blood, how they're in their heart, and we'll we'll share the two right here on Facebook.